Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to another program of A Greater Understanding. I'm Reverend Lawrence Adel Sifa with Cities of Hope Ministry, and to my left is Evangelist Judy Manning, and uh, we're going to talk about evangelism and what it means, so stay tuned. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, and thank you for tuning into another program of A Greater Understanding. And uh, we certainly do appreciate you subscribing to our YouTube channel. If you go to A Greater Understanding Genesee and subscribe, it helps us to get the numbers up so we'll be able to go live on YouTube. And we're getting close to that. Thank you very much. And thank you for listening to us in different time zones. I know that some places on the planet different times that you're able to listen, three, four, five o'clock in the morning, eight o'clock. And you know that we are from 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time. Also, uh, tonight, um, I do a Bible study um, from the great city of Flint, Michigan Public Library. And that is between 5.30 and 7. And uh, it's on the telephone. So if you dial one, which is our country code, 1-701-802-5180. That's 1-701-802-5180. And then when requested, put the access code 6344132-POUND. And tonight we're going to talk about spiritual warfare, how to pray through spiritual warfare. And then also on Saturday, um, we're on the radio, WSNL Christian Talk Radio. Now there's 5 billion of you out there and growing that have a smartphone. Some of you have a smartphone, you don't have food, you don't have fresh water, you don't, you don't, you live under a tree, but it's your window to the world. And uh, if you go to your search engine, favorite search engine, DuckDuck, Google, whatever, and uh, you look for WSNL Christian Talk Radio and get that link. And I always say, send it to your family because you love your family to hear the truth because we preach the true gospel. Send it to your friends. Naturally, you love your friends, but also send it to your enemies. And you might say, well, Reverend Lawrence Del Cifo, Cities of Hope Ministry, why would I want to send the truth to my enemies? Well, we have an adversary. We're not enemies of one another. We should love one another. And just one day might happen that your so-called enemy might become a brother or sister in Christ. And uh, that you determine by showing love. And we're going to be talking about, on the radio, uh, this Saturday, the 30th of March, uh, we're going to be talking about how to overcome your porn addiction, if you have one. And um, there's ways to do it, and Jesus is the answer. Well, Evangelist Judy Manning, yes, sir. Yes, sir. thank you for coming and uh, being interviewed yes, sir. on A Greater Understanding. Um, got a question yes. before we get started. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the day that you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Um, I was about 12 years old. I don't remember the date. Okay. But I was, remember how old I was and it was about 12 years old. Was it in a church or did someone lead you to the Lord outside of a church? It was outside of a church. And he came to me. He came to you. Yes. Okay. And how did he approach you? Now, you're an evangelist, right? Yes. And evangelists think they're a little bit taller than the rest of the other four. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, but um, I was young. And um, I've always sung. Yeah. But my heart was 
to sing for the Lord. To sing for the Lord. And um, he came and uh, I, re I received him at 12. Okay. And I used to sing in my choir and, um, you know, I continued that until I got older and uh, here I am today. Now you mentioned uh, your husband has passed. And yes. To heaven. His name was Vernon. Vernon, yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And he was laying next to you when he transcended to heaven. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And at that point, were you mobile? No, I um, used to use a walker. And uh, every time I would walk, my knees would buckle and I would fall. Wow. And so when he was make, had made that transition, the Lord spoke at that time. He's okay, but I want you to minister to my people. To my people. And so I kind of like, okay. And then. Um, so what happened after that? During the home going. Yeah. I sat by his casket and I sung the whole family hour. The whole family hour. Yeah. And I had my walker with me. And when I left there, I didn't use that walker anymore. You left it there? I did not use that walker. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, and I was just so afraid of what people was going to think of me sitting there singing, but I know what I heard. I knew what I had to do, so I had to get rid of that thought of people. So you were delivered from the walker? Yes, sir. You think maybe the Lord said, well, now I'm going to be your legs. Yes. And you're going to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Yes. My gospel of what I did, mm -hmm. which was God became the creation to save the creation. That's right. Isn't that amazing? Amazing. And amazing. you're going to sing a beautiful song about that. Yes. You know, uh, during our, after our program here. But the thing mm -hmm. is, when God sends you, mm -hmm. he provides. He provides all the time. Yes. Yes, yes. All the time. Yes. Um, there are five offices mm -hmm. that yes. Jesus, when he was on the earth, that he gave to men and women. Mm -hmm. He gave apostles, some to be apostles. Yes. Some to be prophets. Okay, the apostles were sent, some to be prophets, pointing us in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And then he gave evangelists. Yes. Those that would lead those of his children to him. Yes. And then he has the pastors. Now the pastors, mm -hmm. the reason for the ring finger is because they're married to the church. Okay. Yes. And then he gave some to be teachers. And that's your little finger. You put it in your ear and just clean out the wax. So that you can hear things. <laughs> hear but, what's going on. Yes. but an evangelist mm -hmm. actually occupies the other four offices at different times. Times. Have you noticed that? Yes, sir, I do. Sometimes yeah. you're a teacher. Sometimes you're sent. Sometimes you're prophesying. Yes. I've seen you prophesying at uh, Unity uh, of Faith Christian Church yes, in sir. Flint. Yes, Right sir. there on Pettibone and uh, Fenton Road. Correct. Which yes. is headed up by Bishop Earl Fisher and mm -hmm. Pastor Faye Fisher. Yes. And Assistant Pastor uh, Larry Armstrong. And uh, that's a wonderful church. Wonderful church. Yes. And it is spirit-filled. Yes. And uh, when, when I seen you, and I think I told you this earlier, mm -hmm. when I seen you and you were talking and you sat over to the left, it was like a light was shining in the in the sanctuary. And you were the Lord. light. You were the light. My God. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, uh, it was it's amazing how in our walk mm -hmm. with Christ, Yes. Because he allows us, you know, he allowed you to get rid of the walker. Yes, he did. He did. And uh, the strength in your legs and body is his. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because he, when he took those 40 minus one stripes before he went to the cross, it yes. were for our healing. For our healing, for our yes. Healing. 2,000 years ago. It's amazing. That's, That's one of the uh, amazing things about, about the gospel, you know. And then he went to the cross and conquered all the curses. Yes. He conquered the biggest curse and he conquered the kingdom of sin. Sin, yes. That Satan controlled at that time and he took the authority mm -hmm. and gave us back life 
and life eternal. That's right. With him. For those of you that wish to receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you're going to get the opportunity at the end of our program. Yes. So when did you marry Vernon? Me and uh, Vernon got married in 1976. 76. Yes, sir. And, and were you both residing here in Flint? Where were you? Um, we were here in Flint, but okay. Vernon was um, from Oklahoma City. Ah. Yes. So he came here from Oklahoma? Yes, sir. Okay. And I met him. Where'd you meet him? <laughs> At the gas station on, <laughs> <laughs> on Detroit Street <laughs> in Flint. Gas station on Detroit Street? Yep, Clark. Gas station, gas station that was on Detroit Street in wow. Flint. Yes. Wow. And mm -hmm. how did you know that he was going to be your husband? Did you realize that when you first saw him or no? Or no, I wasn't looking for a husband then, so I didn't know, but um, I'm glad that um, we had a chance to come together. How many children do you have? I have no children. No children. No children. Okay. But the Lord provided the children of the world for you. Oh yeah, <laughs> I have nieces, nieces and nephews. nephews. Yes, okay. sir. Yes, sir. All I right. do. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, upon his passing, the mm -hmm. Lord put a mantle on you. Yes. To go into all the world and preach the gospel. Yes. He gave you that gift of an evangelist. Mm -hmm. yes. And where I, my gift is singing. Singing. Wow. Singing. That's where God's work through me when I am singing, where people have been healed, um, delivered, um, set free, hmm. and have hope. 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 Hope is very important. Hope. Yes. Hope is the wings that faith flies on. Yes. Yes, yes it is. Now, You became an evangelist when he gave you that authority. Mm -hmm. And what happened after that? Did, did he say, okay, I want you to go and speak here or speak there? Well, it was, um, like I said, I was, I'm, I'm interested in songs. So I was called to uh, Canada. And Canada. I yes, I ministered over there for a while. And um, wherever he spoke for me to go, I went. And um, whatever song that I sing at that time, I seek him first. Okay. Because he's the one that knows what his people need. He knows what he people knows need. their name. And and um, so I'm just that vessel being used by God at this time in this season. And I encourage everyone to, yes. that's out there to have a relationship with God. Talk to him. Pray. Pray daily. Pray daily. As many times as you get a chance to speak to God, open your mouth. He's right there. He'll never leave you, nor will he forsake you. Got a question. Yes, sir. You said the Lord spoke to you. Yes. Did he speak audibly through the clouds or did he speak in your mind, your heart? How how does he speak to you? You know, I had um, a situation. Uh, it was like a vision. Okay. I was not asleep, but I could not move. And I was in my room mm -hmm. and by the closet door, there was this black silhouette of a man and he was standing by the door and I another one came closer to my bed mm -hmm. and this person was dressed in all white with a staff in his hand. So he had a black silhouette and one dressed in all white. Yes sir. And he's the one that was in the white said to me that I will never let anything harm you. And the one in the white? The one in the white. And, and you, you watched this going on? Yes, sir, but I couldn't move. So the one that was in the corner by the closet door 
when when the one in the white spoke that it disappeared and i when i was able to move i got up and i was just oh my god i couldn't imagine that but the one said i will never never let anything harm. or one harm you wow and he has been so faithful in that. What do you think that was? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can only imagine. Jesus, yes. <laughs> yes. yes. And it was just, I, I, he had the staff in his hand, and I can remember that just like it was yesterday. How old were you then? I was, um, you know, sir, I think I was in my 30s, somewhere in there. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So the Lord protected you. All this time. Yeah. Yeah. It's yes, amazing. Sir. It's amazing. He has that power. And those of you out there that think that he's not there, he's there. He's there all the time. He's all the time. Even those of you that have not received him, he's there. He's there. Yes, he is. And he's waiting on them to come in. Really? People he's waiting on them? Oh, yeah. He'll wait for you. Doesn't he push people into becoming a... Oh, no, no, no. No? no, no. How does that work? Well, you know, he's not going to ever go against your will. He's waiting on you to come. If you want to be free, come. If you want to be painless, come. He didn't say the weapon would would not form, but it won't harm you. You must come. We're living in a time that we need a relationship with God. With God. Yeah. We can go to church. We can go to all these different programs. And if you leave out the same way you came in, you was just there. We have to receive him and to know him for ourselves. Mm -hmm. I just thank God for who he is in my life because I tell you, I don't know how I would have made it this far. Do you know when Jesus, um, in, in John talks about this, mm -hmm. John, one of the sons of Zebedee, Jesus called him one of the sons of thunder, him and James, not James in the Bible because that was his half brother, but he wrote in John 14, and a lot of you out there believe in God, but you see God differently, okay? And here he's talking to his disciples before he goes to the cross. Mm -hmm. And uh, before he goes to the cross, and we're going to celebrate that here just a little bit, uh, this is Holy Week. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And, and he said in here, he says, let not your heart be troubled. He was talking about our heart center of our life right yes. and he said that you believe in god believe also in me he had some of his disciples that didn't believe who he was yes sir. they yes. followed him because he fed them they mm -hmm. followed him because he healed them mm -hmm. but they didn't know who he was yes, and he says believe in god you believe in god but believe also in, in me, me. That's true. And yes. of who he is. You know, um, a lot of things happen in life. Mm -hmm. You know, I say that there's many choices that we have yes. in life. You know, what clothes we're going to wear, what um, jewelry we're going to put on, what food we're going to eat, where we're going to go. Mm -hmm. In life, there's many choices. But in eternity, there's just two, either heaven or hell. Correct. And you better make the choice right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because that's true. we're all going to spend eternity somewhere. Somewhere. Mm -hmm. Either we're going to spend eternity with our loved ones, family and friends, and even maybe our enemies that have received Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or we're going to spend eternity in hell. And mm -hmm. hell is a real place. It, it is a real place. You know, yes. there was a lady and uh, she was churchgoer. And she tried to get her husband to come to church. And the only time he'd come, he'd drop her off Sunday and Wednesday and Saturday. Mm -hmm. And he'd come when they, they were going to feed him or there was an activity, but he wouldn't stay. And uh, she passed about maybe 12, 14 years uh, okay. before she wrote this letter to him. 
And in this letter, he, she said, sweetheart, I want you to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior because I want to spend eternity with you. Wow. And she put, P.S., hell mm -hmm. is hot. <laughs> <laughs> and he yes. had received he had received the lord prior to that but he didn't find that letter till like 14 15 years after, after she that passed. wow yeah wow. but the thing is um so you became evangelist you've been mm -hmm. all over yes i have um and you evangelize with music music why music to draw God's people closer to him to have that intimate relationship with him and also to be healed and to be free and who he's called you to be. Music is healing. Music is healing. Yes. Yes. You know, sometimes when I'm, you know, with the smartphones we got now. Oh, yeah. I'll put healing music on if I'm not yes. feeling good and I'll go to sleep with that. Yes. And I'll wake up refreshed. And music is a form of healing. You know, mm -hmm. it touches the soul. Oh. And so that's, you know, I've always wanted to sing for the Lord. And, I, you know, it has come to pass now. And I see that um, I don't hear what people hear. And I'm glad of that because I can stay humble. You don't hear what we hear when we hear you singing. No, sir. Wow. No, sir. Wow. Mm -mm. And I'm grateful for that. Beautiful. Because I know it's not me. It's him working through me, touching his people. His people. His people. And music can transcend thousands and thousands of miles. Yes, it can. can. Go around the world. Yes, it can. You know, if 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 we go to a doctor. Mm -hmm. And, you know, nothing against doctors. And they heal us with medication or whatever. They heal our body. Mm -hmm. But music heals our soul. So, yes. Our soul. our soul. Yeah. And, you know, you mentioned, we were talking earlier, that everything that we do here on this planet called Earth. Earth. When we leave and transcend either to heaven or hell, we leave everything here. It's going to be right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... Jesus mentioned that you shouldn't really care about what you eat and what you wear, you know, and the things, food for your body, mm -hmm. because he takes care of all of us. All of us. Yes. yes. He takes yes. care of all of us. Mm -hmm. So you became an evangelist. And what are some of the interesting things that you've seen in healing with your music? Oh, wow. Um, hmm. You know, I was at a church and um, a young lady was sitting behind me and um, the Lord spoke to me to get up and go pray for her. Mm -hmm. And uh, me not knowing her, whatever the Lord was giving to me, I was giving to her. And I came back um, maybe about a week later to that same church and that lady was there and she said you didn't you didn't know me but i had cancer and i don't have it anymore she told you that yes wow. yes wow. and i know i remember her um foaming at the mouth and you remember her doing that yes before you no when i went over to pray for her okay. she started foaming at the mouth and uh, this green gook start coming yeah. out of her. And at that time, I didn't, you know, I did what I, God spoke to me to do. And she came back that next week and said that she had cancer, but they don't see it anymore. Wow. Praise the Lord. And I just said, wow. That, well, that, that was my word. Wow. That's cancer is the little seat. We follow the big C. Yes. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. that was so amazing. And I, 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 I sometimes I share it and sometimes I don't. But I think God is able to do whatever he wants to do. Yes. At, even, at any given time. Mm -hmm. 
And so um, I know him as a healer. I know him as a healer because I've had a situation where uh, they saw something on, on me and I went for this test. And the night before I went back to the doctor, I felt this ripping and tearing inside of me. In your body? In my body. I could not move, but I felt it. And when I went back for the test, they said they didn't see anything. So Now you have CDs. Yes, I do. How would they be able to purchase your CDs? Well, they can give me a call at... Um, well, how about an email address? What's your my email? My e email is... Mark this down. Beauty, B-E-A-U-T-Y, 2009-26 at yahoo.com. Yahoo.com. Yeah. And you can play that back and write that down. And they can contact you. Yes, sir. And email you. Yes, sir. Can they ask you about healing also? Yes, sir. If they have questions about that? You know, because we're living in a broken world. We are. There is all kinds of havoc that's going on right now. All over. You know, um, I read that a dying man kicks the hardest. And mm -hmm. uh, it says in Revelation that he knows his time is short. He knows his time is short. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, a uh, definition of, of the devil Satan is accuser of the brethren. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's he's doing his job. Yes. Accusing the brethren. And um, um, because time is short, we want to enjoy what time we have being whole or healed. Yes, yes. Now, let me ask you a question. Um, you mentioned that about cancer, about yes. cancer. Okay, with your singing. And... Um, so they can get your music. They can. They can. Yeah. All right. And that's a wonderful thing. I, I I heard her sing and it's just it's wonderful. You're gonna hear her in a little bit to sing. But um have you always resided here in the Flint area? Yes, I was born here in Flint, Michigan. Really? What hospital? Hurley. Hurley. Yes, sir. Yeah, all the rich people were born. Yeah. Hurley. <laughs> I was born in St. Joe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, but but no, it's um I have two cousins that work at Hurley. Okay. I have a cousin, Michael Safa, who works in ER. Okay. And uh Amy or Amira was Safa, but she became Hillel. Okay. And uh, she got married and she works in pediatrics. At Hurley. Yeah, so Hurley's a dynamic hospital. It is very powerful. It wasn't swallowed up like all the other hospitals, like St. Joe and Glen Osteopathic and Glen yes. General, all that with Genesis. Yes. Uh, but um, uh, the thing is, let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. If you were to walk out of here today mm -hmm. and someone was ill, how mm -hmm. would you handle that? If I saw, and they looked to you, and said, I saw that they needed help, I would pray for them. Pray for them. Yes, I would. Yeah. And God answers prayers. He does. Yeah. He does. Some of us out there that are listening, mm -hmm. they don't believe God answers prayers. That's because they don't have that relationship. It's a relationship. It is a relationship. Um, if you don't know Him for yourself. Sometimes it's not about how much you know, it's who you know. Yes, how much yeah. you know, who's you know, and whose you are. And who's yeah. you are, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, yes, sir. Child of the Most High God. You know, there was a, a fellow that I met at a church where I attended in Fenton. Mm -hmm. And uh, Terry Mintz was his name. Okay. And uh, he was on his way to a Kenneth Copeland mm -hmm. event, and he picked up a, a hitchhiker. Oh, wow. And he's driving, and all of a sudden he told the hitchhiker, he says, well, I'm going to go left, so i got to drop you off because you're supposed to go right. He says, no, I'm going to kill you. He says, you can't kill me. I'm a child of the most high God. And he put him in front of his car, mm -hmm. and he was probably standing as close as we are, and mm -hmm. he shot five rounds into his chest. The bullets dropped in midair, 
and fell to the ground. The person that was the assailant, tears came in his eyes and he says, tell me about your God. Mm -hmm. And he received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Wow. Um, we don't have to be martyred in this broken world. No, we don't. You know, there were people in this 66 books that were martyred for a purpose, mm -hmm. except for one John, <laughs> who wrote the book of John, yeah. Three-Eyed John, and Revelation. Yes. And the thing is, um, and when he was writing Revelation, a lot of the individuals that were the writers of the, the Bible, mm -hmm didn't know what they were writing all the time, but they were inspired by God. Yes. What God wanted to say. <clears throat> Even Daniel, he said, Lord, what does this mean? He says, it's not for you. It's for others. For others, yes. <clears throat> but um, so have you ever went on a mission trip? Uh, yes, I have. Oh, where? Well, when I went to Canada, Canada, yes, okay. and I um, stayed there for a while, and I, I met so many different people, so many different cultures of people, yeah, and um, it was amazing. It was amazing, and I'm planning. I don't know, um, um, Bishop Fisher. I think they're going back to Jamaica. Jamaica. You're going to go with them? And they asked me, yeah. would I go with them? Oh, wow. So um, I'm looking forward to that, if that's going to happen. Beautiful, beautiful. Mm -hmm. I if am, the Lord wants it to happen, it'll happen. It'll happen. He'll make the provision. Yes, he will. Yeah. The Jamaican food is delicious. Oh, I've never yes. been there. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, there's there's a uh, uh, Jamaican uh, jerk chicken place in Flint, you mm -hmm. know, where McLaren is. Yes. Yeah, on Beecher. And we interviewed the lady oh. that had that. And, and oh, it was, we, we ate with uh, Pastor uh, Fisher, uh, Pastor Faye and, and Bishop <laughs> Fisher. And all of us were there. And it was just delicious. Well, delicious. I never. Yeah. Have it. But each culture has its own food. Its own food, yes. And uh, that's exciting. And, mm -hmm. and she was an interesting lady. Um, she <laughs> trained up youth. Mm -hmm. in her restaurant okay. and then put them out to work in different places. Yeah. And, and you mentioned something when we were talking earlier before we went on about the youth. Mm -hmm. Got a question. Why are the youth running away from God? You know, I don't have that answer, but I do know that it's so many things that's going on in this world today mm -hmm. that is confusing the mind of the youth. Confusing the mind. The mind. Okay. You know, the mind. It is just so, you know, you could see the hurt. You could see them wanting something to grab hold to, mm -hmm. to have hope and faith, but it's not being, I want to say, when they come into the church, yes, they have to have something to do. Okay. And maybe that will keep them there. But if they're just coming and going in and out that revolving door, mm -hmm. they're not going to get it. Do you know, um, I'm of the baby boom era, you know, mm -hmm. the 50s and, and 60s and that. Yes. And um, many of us, in my age, mm -hmm. are in control of the corporate church. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, what happens is the youth will come in and want to do something. Mm -hmm. And we're not about to give up control of the corporate church. We give them a position and then mm -hmm. we micromanage them. Yes. And then we find out why do they leave? Well, we've got to give them a position, allow them to make mistakes. Yes, that you know, is true. You know, I mentioned Pastor Richard Eugene Blue, mm -hmm. who was uh, uh, one of my outreach pastors. And I was under him for about 12, 14 years. Mm -hmm. And um, we would make a terrible mistake. And he would look, oh, well, tomorrow's another day, you know. <laughs> but he would allow us yes. to do that and allow us to learn. Mm -hmm. And go ahead. No, and given a, you, you were given a chance. Yes. Yes, 
because we all make mistakes. Yeah, I remember we, we used to minister at the Genesee County Jail. Yeah, uh, I've been the, there. The third floor for the women, the fourth floor for the men. Correct. And uh, we'd have like 20, 30, 40 people, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did that on a Thursday from mm -hmm. 2 to about 4 or something like that. Okay. And uh, Pastor Blue told me one time, he says, now you got to make an altar call. Okay. Mm -hmm. So being really, you know, schooled in the Lord, I says, anybody want to receive Jesus, just step right up. Six <laughs> men stood in front of the podium. And I said, oh, Lord, what do I do now? <laughs> you can't um, say the wrong thing no. when someone is ready to receive him. That's right. And you said we must know who he is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some of us have knowledge of who God is. Yes. But to know God to know him. is to have a relationship just like Adam knew Eve. That's correct. Abraham knew Sarah. Mm -hmm. It's a passionate uh, type, um, how would you say, it's a feeling that a you feeling, have for yes. him. You know, not just understand the words and wrote, but really get involved with him. That's right. How can someone get involved with becoming intimate with the Lord in your mind? In my mind is to first seek him first by praying and receiving him mm -hmm. as your Lord and Savior. And then also to get into the word. So they, they need to get a Bible. Yes, sir. And if anybody need a Bible, I don't care where you are in the world. If you get a hold of me, Reverend Lawrence Sedell Sifa with Cities of Hope Ministry, and go to Cities of Hope Ministry at gmail.com, get me your name and your address, and I'll send you a Bible wherever you are in the world. It's it, it's the beginning. It's the beginning mm -hmm. after you receive him as your Lord and Savior, which you'll get the opportunity. Yeah. Yes, sir. But um, you know, it's 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 amazing. Um what would you do if you had a choice mm -hmm. to not be an evangelist? What would I do if I, you know what, there's nothing that I would want to do but to wow. serve the Lord. Wow. Um, there's nothing out there. Beautiful, beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's that. That 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 means that you're in the right place at the right time. Yes, sir. You know when I um, I was actually used to come here from Fenton. I lived in Fenton mm -hmm. and come to Flint. And Fenton come to Flint, and then finally I was evicted from my home of 18 years mm -hmm. by my sister. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, a home that I gave to my mom, and uh, mm -hmm. I found myself in Flint, mm -hmm. and it was like. I would go outside of the city or mm -hmm. Genesee County. I call it Genesis County because mm -hmm. God is starting a new beginning. And I would get uneasy and nervous. And then I come back and I'm just at peace. What do you think that is? That you were in the right place. Right place. Yes, right sir. place where he wants me. Where he wants you. Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so you were born in Flint. Yes, sir. Um, what do you think God has in store for Flint in the very near future that you're receiving from the Holy Spirit? That um, we need to come outside of the four walls of the church ah. and reach God's people. Uh, those that come to church and fellowship in church, um, some might know him personally, but we need to come outside of the church and show love, show love, respect, because there's no one on this earth that's better than the next. Mm -hmm. God created us all, and he has created us equally. Equally. You know, there's no one better than the other. And so I encourage the ones that's listening today, if you do not have a relationship with God, take the time out of this day to get to know him. 
Don't wait till tomorrow. <laughs> uh, and tomorrow is not promised. <laughs> so you better do it today. While you got a chance, while you are, he woke you up this morning and started you out on your way. You didn't wake you up this morning. It was God that woke you up. You know, Evangelist Judy, some people didn't get up this morning. Now, that was my husband. Yeah. He went to sleep and never woke up. That's a peaceful way to transcend. And I remember the last words that he said. Uh, he kept coming back and forth into the bedroom. I really love you. So I don't know if he knew, but that's the last words I heard. Do you know um, my father passed March 7th, 1991. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember I wasn't. Um, well, he didn't accept my first wife, him and my mom. So we didn't really, you know, other than holidays and things like that. Mm -hmm. And mom called me, said, um, we need to go to Ann Arbor. The doctor wants to talk to us about dad. I says, dad, okay. Oh yeah, he's fine. Mm -hmm. And I get there and my whole family was there. It was like a family reunion. And I didn't really pay attention to what was going on. You know, I was there to see my dad. And I was eating his food, and we were visiting, and we were talking about. We were in real estate together, in business all our life, mm -hmm. and we did we did this, and we did this for this one and this one, and then finally, he was about 15, 20 feet away, mm -hmm. and he says, "Son, I have cancer, and there's nothing they can do." And I said, "Oh, Dad, I'm going to lose you." You know what he did? He looked at me. He says, "You won't lose me. I will always be with you." Wow. Yes. Yes. And. Yes. Um, it was it was amazing that it was just like they were preparing me for the ministry because I wasn't mm -hmm. a minister then. Okay. I, I would have not listened to who I was back then. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Pastor Larry Armstrong, we were at a Bible study Saturday. Uh -huh. Yeah, as we do at Unity of Faith Christian Church in a prayer session. And mm -hmm. uh, we were talking and I and I, I says, Do you remember? You know, he says he remembers me. I remember him when he came, him and Ann uh -huh. um, from Wisconsin. And um, I says, I'm not the same Larry that you met. He says, yeah, yeah, the other Larry wouldn't shut up. <laughs> but, and I could see that. The Lord mm -hmm. has allowed me to see the difference. Oh, yes. You know, because I'm no longer me. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when, you, when you receive, as you know, Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. um, you don't belong to yourself. That is so true. What yes. you eat doesn't, you shouldn't have to make a choice. You should consult him. Consult him. Um, where you go, where you walk, what time, who you associate with. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> Excuse bless me. you. the more you realize at that point where um, you're not your own, he you're bought not. you for a big price. Mm -hmm. He shed his blood. On a cross. On a cross, the Blood yes. of God. And uh, gave us mm -hmm. grace beyond measure. You know, I wouldn't have saved me <laughs> if I was <laughs> Me yeah, either. I was. But it's, it's, it's amazing how he's a loving God, folks. He's a loving God. And yes. he's waiting for you. He's at so the door true. knocking. Mm -hmm. And uh, he waits for you. You know those paintings of, of Jesus outside the door knocking? Yes. Do you ever notice there's no doorknob on the outside? That is true. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You've got to open the door from the inside. And, uh, yeah. and he'll come in and sup with you. You know, when, when you eat with someone, mm -hmm. you fellowship. It's a little different than we do now. Now we're eating on the run and this and that. Yes. But I remember as a child growing up, the dinner table was very important. Yes, for everybody to come and gather. Yes. And, <coughs> Excuse and me. our father would bring somebody new, mm -hmm. a lawyer, an insurance guy, to sit at the table. We could ask any questions that we wanted. We learned at the dinner table. Yes. That's the sup he's talking and, about. And nowadays that does not happen. It should. And, but it does not. Yeah. And, uh, you know. I think the enemy has taken that from us. He's trying to destroy the family. Yes. Um, if you were to start your life all over, 
what would you change? You know what? I, I wouldn't change a thing. I am just grateful right where I am at today. There's no regrets or anything um, that happened back then, you know. It has prepared me for the now. For the now. Mm -hmm. Do you know if you were good to go to someone for prayer, mm -hmm. like yourself, and to receive something that you're lacking, mm -hmm. if you didn't have anything to give, they couldn't receive. That's true. So you had to have that that peace, that understanding. That's right. In order to give it to someone. That's true. Because it says in order it's more blessed to give than to than receive. receive yes. But you have to be blessed. You can't to give, give. If you know what I mean. <laughs> that is so true. Yeah. And that is that's the main thing. Um to help those that have fallen short. Um I go down to Carriage Town Ministries. Uh, and I minister in song there. Father and son run that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so. so many of those, not only men, you, you see women there with their children. Yes. And, and I'm just grateful that that place is there to help those people. Yes. And if there's anything that I can do um, to be a part and to help, that's what it's about. Giving. Giving, helping God's people, not thinking that um, you're better because you're right here and they're, they're struggling. You're still equal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's the principle of giving, <clears throat> giving. and receiving. And we you see, don't receive yeah. first. You have to give you have before to give. you receive. Yeah, that's so yeah. true. Yes. And the principles that God put in the universe and the world. Mm -hmm. um, even the non-believers mm -hmm. some of the non-believers know them better than we do yes yes about the giving and receiving yep. some of them know better than we do um, what would you advise someone let's say they're living in a country um, and they can't read the bible they can't get a bible they can't um, worship God the way they want to and they're under bondage what would you suggest to them what what could they do you know being in that situation is very hard to um put into my mind I, I but I know it's places like that where they don't receive yeah uh the the word of God and my heart aches for that you know um when different mission People go out and go to different yes. places. You know, you have to be careful because they don't believe. Now, how would they receive? I, I, you know, maybe we could be an example, but I just don't. I, I tell you this, I don't know. You know, uh, Bishop Fisher and Pastor Faye, mm -hmm. they've been to other countries. Yes. And they see... <laughs> Other people yeah. receiving Jesus in their healings more so than us here yeah. in the States. Why would you think that's the case? Because they're, um, I, I want to say they're more freer there. They're more freer. And here in the United States, in our country, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of judging going on. Yeah. And you know, you sometimes you can't be free as you should be to worship him, to praise him. And I, I've heard a um, young lady that just came back from Africa. She said that the people were free to worship God. Yeah. And she has never really seen anything like that before because here, it's very different. Very different. Very different. Yeah. Um, what do you see God doing this year in 24? People have talked. There's going to be 
a lot of problems and a lot of good happening. What can we do to prepare for that? Pray. 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 Yeah, but if you pray, you're just using words. No, you got to pray. You got to carry. Carry. Yeah, you got to stay in God's presence. Presence. And he will show you, um, you know, the word said he will direct your path. Because if you try to depend on yourself mm -hmm. of doing things, then we wouldn't need God. And you would have been had it together. We need him. Well, you know, there's a lot of people out there. I, I, I met this young man mm -hmm. um, having breakfast at First Presbyterian Church in, in the morning on Sunday. Mm -hmm. He's a young man. He's 20 years old. He's got his backpack. He's left his mother and father's home. Okay. And he's going out to just strike his life. And, and <clears throat> we were talking about God. He says, how can God, I'm going to ask you the same question he mm -hmm. asked me. How can God, being loving, allow all these problems to happen? I truly believe that uh, the reason why things are going on at this time is to draw you closer to him and to bring you to a place of, um, what do I want to say? where you would have a peace of mind to draw you closer to him. Draw you closer to him. Yes. I I've heard that where people say that he's allowing all these problems to happen mm -hmm. so that we can visually see the wickedness. Yes. And then to also see that he is real. Even though we don't see him with the natural eye, the spirit is what is the most amazing miracle that you've ever seen God do oh, wow. in your life up to this point? Um, I used to minister at Genesis um, um, Hospice, and this young lady was laying there, and uh, she was in between transition, I believe, mm -hmm. and um, I sung Mary Did You Know, wow. and her eyes opened up and her mother and father was just blown away because they had been trying to get her to wake Reviver, up. Revive her. Yeah. yeah, and she woke up and that was so amazing to me. Wow. Then know that, uh, you know, when you making that transition, your hearing is the last thing I heard that leaves your body. And she heard Mary, did you know? So your ministry of music yes, sir. revived her. And she woke up. You know, and I take no credit for that. God is amazing. He yeah. is amazing. When my, my father was transcending, <laughs> mm -hmm. and I remember it was uh, about maybe 10 minutes before 3 in the morning, because I was sleeping at his feet, mm -hmm. and he hollered goodbye three times wow. so loud. So I went and got my brothers and sisters and my mom and we stood around him mm -hmm. and uh, we could actually see his spirit Christ. transcend. You know, it was just amazing. And mm. before that, um, my sister Monet was with Michael, her husband, and she came from California and Michelle was there, my other sister and my brother, Terry and Mark, my mom, we were all standing around my dad's bed mm -hmm. Yeah, that night. And uh, my sister, when I said, oh, daddy, you're going to get well and this and that. And this one nurse standing next to me said, don't tell Sammy that. His mm -hmm. real name was a C. We went by Sammy mm -hmm. because he's already made his peace with the Lord. Oh, my okay. sister was crazy. I'm going to have your job and I'm going to do this <laughs> and that. So being, wow. being, you know, uh, quite sociable, I, I talked to her and I said, what's your name? She says, Mary. Yeah. I says, have you been here long? She's like, I come around once in a while when I'm needed. I'm a floater. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> and she was talking. We visited for about a half hour. And then my dad passed and his wish, because we were at the Flint Osteopathic Hospital okay. on Beecher. And uh, it was the cancer floor. 
Okay. And um, his wish, my dad always cared about others. That's why he said goodbye three times because he didn't want us to find him gone. He wanted to say goodbye. And mm -hmm. um, he says, I want the flowers from my funeral to be brought back here so these people that are here can enjoy them rather than have them die. Wow. So we loaded them all up. I remember mm -hmm. that day after the funeral and uh, we took them there and uh, my dad's room was across from the nurse's quarter. Mm -hmm. And so I went and I wanted to, you know, tell the nurse, thank you, you know, for mm -hmm. being there for my dad. So I went and I took the nurse's quarter and I says, uh, there was a nurse in my dad's room that helped him. And I just want to thank her. Is she here? Wow. He says, who is that? I said, Mary he says, we don't have no Mary here. Okay. And it was an angel Jeez. that helped my father transcend. She, you know, she says, I'm a floater. I come around once in a while when I'm needed. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That... And yeah. And um, she, she, he made his peace with the Lord. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. You know, it's, it's the type of thing that we don't understand the other side. We don't understand um, what um, is there. But someone asked me, what is heaven like? So mm -hmm. I went into prayer. And you know what the Lord told me? Heaven mm -hmm. is just like we have here, only no sin. Oh, that's so awesome. <laughs> but we're able to do whatever we want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But anyways... Thank you for coming. Thank you have you one for... last word for everyone? Uh, yes. Um, not try, but get a relationship with the Lord. Seek him first in all that you do. And I wondered if Mary really knew her baby boy. Yeah. Before mm -hmm. you sing your song... Yes, uh, we always give everyone the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. And the thing is, um, I, I tell everyone it's not a formula. Mm -hmm. You know, reciting a sinner's prayer is fine. Repenting is fine. Being water baptized is fine. Mm -hmm. But it's a heart issue. Some yes. people will miss heaven by 18 inches from their head to their heart. So um, would you help recite a prayer with everyone? You can do we need your help. We we'll bow our heads, close our eyes, and repeat after me. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I thank you. I thank you. For a personal faith. For a personal faith. That you are the Son of God. That you are the Son of God. And my Lord. And my Lord. And my Savior. And my Savior. I believe that you died. I believe that you died. You were buried. You were buried. And you rose on the third day. And you rose on the third day. And because I believe it. And because I believe it, I'm born again. I am born again. As you receive me, Jesus. As you receive me, Jesus. I receive you. I receive you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And all God's children said. And amen. all God's children said. Amen and amen. Amen. And if you and said amen. that for the first time, like I said earlier, you can you can get a hold of me uh, at Reverend Lawrence Adel Sifa with Cities of Hope Ministry. Yeah, or you can call me 1-513-512-3200, and I'll get you a Bible wherever you are in the world. It's important that you get in a good Bible-believing church, and you start to be learned up and discipled correctly in the Word. And those of you that just want you know, the narrow road rather than the wide road, um, welcome back. Welcome back. And uh, we're going to hear a beautiful song. You know, when this first came out, mm -hmm. um, there was tears in my eyes, and there still is. So excuse me <laughs> while, while, while Evangelist Judy Manning is singing. Mary, did you know? Yes, Mary, okay. did you know? Mary, did you know your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know your baby boy would see 
our sons and daughters. Did you know your baby boy has come to make you new? And that child that you deliver will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know your baby boy would give sight to a blind man, Mary? Did you know your baby boy would calm the storms with his hands? Did you know your baby boy has walked where angels trod? When you kiss your little baby, you've kissed the face of God. The blind will see, the deaf will hear, and the dead will live again. The lame will lead, the dumb will speak, praises of the Lamb. Mary, did you know your baby boy, he is Lord. Of all creation, Mary, did you know your baby boy? He would one day rule the nation. Did you know your baby boy? He is heaven's. Perfect love in that sleeping child you were holding. He is the great I am. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Evangelist Judy, yes, we'd love to have you come back again. If you like, anytime, yes, anytime. Yes. God bless Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting. Yes, me. and you all be blessed.